Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to answer your question of, am I hypothyroid or do I have some degree of hypothyroidism? If you stick around to the end of this video, you're gonna have all the tools that you need to really put this into perspective. My name's Scott Resnick, I'm a physician, and I'm making these videos because I think you want good information about your health, and I wanna provide you with the tools to really make some lasting and durable changes in terms of your health. At the end of the day, I want you to look and feel great and live a long time. So stick with me through this video, and you will have a complete understanding of everything you need to know to fully assess your thyroid state. I can tell you, as a physician, and having taken care of thousands of patients over the course of my 27 year career at this point, that any number of people are walking around out there with all the symptoms and signs, in addition to laboratory testing that suggests hypothyroidism, but their complaints are falling on deaf ears. I think the reason is that the majority of physicians in this country are either relying on the, on the wrong, the incorrect laboratory tests, or they're not listening to what the patient is telling them. I mean, I've had so many patients who are basically through their symptoms just screaming, I'm hypothyroid, and yet this seems to fall on deaf ears with their physicians. In order to really make a comprehensive assessment of your thyroid function, you need to have a sort of a clinical look at what's going on with the thyroid in addition to the correct objective or laboratory measurements. So let's talk about some of the classic symptoms that I see. And these are probably going in, in descending order in terms of their frequency. The first thing that I see in my hypothyroid patients is fatigue. And I can tell you that fatigue is pretty much proportional to the degree of hypothyroidism. The next thing that I see which is really common are cold hands and cold feet. And after that, I would probably say that most people are complaining of changes in their hair and their skin. So it's not uncommon for me to see a woman who's been to her hairdresser who says that her hair has changed. They hear that her cuticles and nails feel a little different. And as people get into more advanced stage, stages of hypothyroidism, we see loss of the lateral third of the eyebrows. And also look into your bowel function. People who are pretty significantly hypothyroid have really um, slowed down bowel function. And this is dry, hard stools and infrequency of pooping. So if you're having a bowel movement less than once a day, if you're having a poop every two to three or maybe four days, that is just a very strong clinical suggestion that you are in a hypothyroid state. What I want to do is go over a few objective studies. These are measurements that you can make to really get a sense of where your thyroid function is. The first set of measurements are at-home measurements to be done in the privacy of your own home, and I want you to make these and record them, like open up an, uh, a file on your phone and hang on to them because as you optimize your thyroid function, these numbers are gonna change. First, check your weight. Take off all your clothes, stand on your scale, write it down. The next thing that I want you to do is to check your pulse. And I think this is one of the most important measurements that a physician can do. And I can tell you that I never see doctors take their pulses anymore of, of their patients. So here's how you take your pulse. What you do is you start with your three fingers on the outer side of your wrist and then roll them towards the front side of the wrist. And as you roll off of the bone, you're gonna start to feel where your tissue gets a little more fleshy. Press down there. That's your radial pulse. The first thing that I want you to do is count how many beats you feel in 30 seconds, multiply this by two, and then this is the number of beats per minute. The last objective measurement that I want you to get is your basal body temperature. Now the first caveat I want to offer here is that in women who are ovulatory, meaning they're having monthly cycles, that mid-cycle you're going to have about a one degree elevation in your body temperature. So if you're in the middle of your cycle and you want to get your basal body temperature, just wait a few days. Um, but for everybody else, I'm going to recommend you get a good digital thermometer and first thing in the morning, check your body temperature. Now, we're looking for trends here, right? So there's gonna be a little bit of fluctuations, but really I wanna get an idea of what, you know, where is your trend? Most people who are hypothyroid have a, a, a lower basal body temperature. So I pulled a paper that I've got on my computer here entitled, Normal Body Temperature, a Systematic Review, uh, published in the Open Forum of Infectious Diseases in 2019. And what they determined is that the average basal body temperature, and this is in men, women, you know, different ways of taking the body temperature, like the tympanic eardrum uh, methods, under the armpit, uh, oral or rectal. 
the average basal body temperature is 36.7 degrees centigrade, which is equivalent to about 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So measure this on a few consecutive mornings. If you are consistently between 0.5 and 1 degree lower on either of these scales, you're probably in some degree of hypothyroidism, and I would expect for this to be reflected in your laboratory values. And understanding laboratory values is where we're going in the last part of this talk. So I want to preface this by a story. Um, when I was in medical school, I had um, a self-proclaimed uh, thyroid expert tell us that Understanding thyroid health is really simple. All you do is check what's called a TSH. If the TSH is in the normal range, you're done, the thyroid is normal, we don't have to do any more thinking. And I can't imagine a less valuable piece of information. So, so TSH is probably what many of you have had in the past. This stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. And what it is, is it's a hormone that is released by the brain to tell the thyroid gland, which is here in your neck, to begin to make more thyroid hormone. The simplistic view of this is that as thyroid hormone goes down, TSH goes up, and as thyroid hormone goes up, TSH goes down. But I can tell you, having examined thousands and thousands of patients and having done thousands of these studies in my medical career, that it's not that simple. And this erroneous simplicity is unfortunately um, the place that so many of you will find yourself because you're going to the doctor and saying, my hair is dry, I'm putting on weight, I'm tired all the time. Your doctor, following the erroneous teachings of the thyroid expert, checks only a TSH and says, oh, your TSH is right in the middle of that normal range. You're fine. Go home, come back next year, and you're suffering for another year. So what I want to do is first introduce this idea of a feedback loop because it's important to understand that it also applies to other biological systems as well. So what happens is when the brain senses a low degree of thyroid hormone, it makes TSH. TSH tells the cells in the thyroid gland to begin to make the active hormones, and these are T4 and T3. T4 is a tyrosine molecule bound to four molecules of iodine, and this is an inactive precursor hormone. The active thyroid hormone is T3, which is the same tyrosine molecule, but with three molecules of iodine around the outside. It's been modified to its active form. Here's a fun fact. We have about 10 trillion cells in our body, and every one of those 10 trillion cells has a receptor for thyroid hormone. So that's like having a Twitter account with 10 trillion followers, which I think is pretty impressive. Now, TSH works only on the thyroid gland. It doesn't affect any of these 10 trillion cells, with one exception. There has been some data recently that suggests that the TSH hormone, which is released by the brain, can have some effect on the bones as well. But for the time being, let's just assume that the TSH doesn't uh, activate the cells in our body, and it doesn't directly reflect the amount of free thyroid hormone which is accessible to those cells. You'll notice as I go through this discussion that I refer to free thyroid hormones. We need to talk about that right now. So many of the antiquated tests that some of you have had, and again, I just see this because the patients go to their doctors, they have the laboratory test, they don't feel well, they come to see me. A lot of these older and cheaper tests measure TSH, which as you'll recall, does not directly reflect what our cells are seeing. It also measures some of the thyroid hormones, but typically this will be a total T4, or what's known as a T3-RUI. This is not adequate information to make a thorough assessment of your thyroid function. What I recommend for all my patients is to obtain a TSH, a free T3, and a free T4. What happens is the total thyroid measurements reflect the thyroid hormone that is in our bloodstream, but a lot of that thyroid hormone is bound to carrier proteins. So if you have a set number of units of thyroid hormone and all of them are bound to the carrier protein, it makes sense that none of these molecules are available to talk to the DNA in our 10 trillion cells that are waiting for its message. Conversely, a free thyroid hormone measures the free hormone which is unbound from the carrier proteins and tells us what is accessible to the cells. So a typical range of TSH is between 0.5 and 5.0, but I think that as the TSH gets into these higher uh, parts of this range, that it really represents an abnormal TSH, particularly if you have a number of these symptoms that we discussed earlier. In my opinion, an optimal or 
a redrawn TSH range should be between about 0.4 and 3, with an optimal TSH range being between about 0.4 and 1.5. When it comes to ranges for the free hormones, the free T4, which remember is an inactive precursor hormone to the active T3, the free T4 range is somewhere in the 0.6 to 1.4 range, and the free T3 range is in the 2.4 to 4.2 range. Now, when I see an optimized set of thyroid hormones, and again, this has to be done in conjunction with improved symptoms as well, the TSH is in the range of 0.5 to 1.5. The free T4 is in the 1.2 to 1.3 range, and the free T3 is in the 3.4 to 3.6 range. When I see patients that get their thyroid hormone into these ranges, what happens? Their weight comes down, their energy comes back, their skin begins to feel better, their bowel function begins to improve, everything seems to turn the corner. I want to take a brief moment here and talk about natural treatment of thyroid hormone. Now, there are any number of doctors or websites out there that will gladly sell you remedies to help to turn around your thyroid function. Now, if you see an earlier video that I did, I referenced uh, the fact that there are some cases where our thyroid function can be tampered down in ways that can be reversible. Um, typically, this would be replacing nutrients such as deficiencies in selenium, iodine, um, or modulating stress. But I can tell you, having seen tons and tons of patients who've tried some of these natural thyroid uh, replacement approaches, that the vast majority of people are really going to start feeling better when they get on some thyroid replacement therapy. And in another video, I will review with you what I like to use, and you can actually go to your doctors and make these recommendations or requests. Finally, all of this information is accessible to you. Through the internet, you can obtain all of these laboratory studies, do these tests on yourself, and have this information to be more well-equipped, more well-informed to have a discussion with your doctor. So let's recap from the beginning, shall we? Number one, I think there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people out there who are walking around in a relatively hypothyroid state and we're not using the right assessments to actually make the measurements to determine it. In order to determine if you were in a hypothyroid state, you have to first get a good uh, sub look at your subjective complaints. If you are, if you come back positive for two out of those five different uh, subjective complaints that I reviewed before, you probably have some degree of hypothyroidism and don't be surprised to see abnormalities on your thyroid hormone testing. Next, get the objective data. Get your weight, basal body temperature, and your baseline pulse. This will also help you to know if you're being overcorrected with thyroid hormone. And finally, get the right testing. The best testing to really assess your thyroid function is a TSH, a free T3, and a free T4. And if you need to, rewind back in the video and remind yourselves of what the optimized levels are. Hopefully this gives you all the information that you, you need to get the most insight that you can into your thyroid function. It is essential that we look at thyroid health with a combination of subjective uh, and objective studies, the objective studies being the measurements we talked about, and a comprehensive thyroid panel. So, is this you? Because if you're in a relatively hypothyroid state, it is quite possible that you could feel a lot better by really getting these numbers into the right, right range. Um, one thing I didn't talk about in this video was um, uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, that almost merits a whole additional discussion. But if your TSH levels are towards the higher part of the range, I mean like a TSH of four or five, it's absolutely imperative that you make some measurements to look into Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And if you want to learn about Hashimoto's, just click on this following video. I will see you there and we will continue this discussion. So in health, I'm sharing this information because I think you folks are smart and you want good information and you want to be able to turn your lives around and really uh, eat the best, everything that you can. I'm giving you this information because I want to help you to be the, your best possible. So thanks for your time. I know your time is valuable and I will see you in the next video.